and I'm still in Spain and if you've been following my Europe series you know I've been basically doing a new country each week but this week we're doing a repeat and the reason why is because I'm basically just following the coast until I get to Portugal because my flight home back to America is out of Lisbon and Spain is so large that I didn't want to do a very long travel day so I kind of just split it up so that's why we're still in Spain and where you last saw me was leaving Mallorca and then I made my way to Valencia where I stayed two nights and I was in an eight person mixed dorm. These bunk beds were so sketchy. They were made of metal. Any slight movement, it was just a creak. And then the curtain was basically just held up by a four by four. It's on the top one. Other thing that was really annoying, it wasn't pushed up against the wall. So there was a huge gap in the outlet. Didn't have a shelf next to it. So my phone and my electronic were dangling across. I got into Valencia early afternoon. So the first thing that I did, I went over to this area that had different museums from science, aquarium, art, music, and there was even a movie theater. It felt so futuristic. It didn't even feel like I was in Spain anymore. The buildings were super cool and modern. It was just so different from what I'm used to seeing. That's why I wanted to start in that area. Some of these buildings you could go inside for free to walk around and if you wanted to do additional things then you did have to pay for those. And the aquarium of course you had to pay for. So the only one I didn't go inside at all was the aquarium. But it was nice because the science museum walk in and there was hands on activities. I couldn't really film much because there's just kids and families and I'm trying to respect people's privacy. But then you could buy tickets and then the above floor there was other things and I'm assuming it would be more hands-on. And in one of the other buildings it was more art but when you first walked in there was an information booth, a little gift shop to the right of that underneath the stairs. There was stuff directed towards art and then there was this whole seating area. You could go up the escalator. There was a cafe restaurant that wasn't open at the time. But at the top I went and sat on this blob and there was a mirror in front and I tried to get an aesthetic cool shot. It wasn't really working. It was such a random building. I don't know this whole area was so random. But I just walked all along the outside. On either side there's gardens gardens and on one side specifically it's a bunch of palm trees, flowers, and just a whole overview of this futuristic looking area. There was also a Valencia sign but there was a long line for that and it was hot so I didn't feel like waiting in it. After stepping into what it felt like the future I walked the streets. There was a bunch of different street art. There was this really cool tile Pac-Man one that I thought was fun. I was starting to get hungry but not overly hungry and I've been craving acai bowls. Every time I find a place that makes acai they're always closed or they just don't look good and I finally came across one. First off, it was really busy in there and second off, it was delicious and it makes sense why it was busy. Ended up going there twice because really refreshing and just good and the people were nice and of course I made it to a church. Are you even in Europe if you don't see at least one church everywhere you go? I feel like you have to walk inside of them. This one was really big and it was different parts to it. So I'm not 100% sure what the one that you could go into for free and that was beautiful. The murals on the ceiling, insane. Little details, a lot of people were sitting in there and just being very present, which I feel like is normal when you go into churches, but I'm so used to seeing people with the phones out and more so walking around, whereas people are just like sitting. That was a part of the church. It wasn't the main part because the main part you had to pay nine euros and personally I did not do that again I've just been in so many churches that I didn't feel the need to do that but what I did do was go to the tower which was a dollar fifty to go to the top and you had to enter through the church to go to the tower except for they had a wall try to block it but I could still see in it a little bit and I decided to go in this tower it was hot there was a bunch of steps but it was totally worth it because you got to the top amazing 360 view of Valencia and when you were up there there was a nice breeze so it actually felt pretty good and the bell went off while I was up there and it was so loud but so cool <laughs> I'm literally talking about how the bell went off in Valencia. 
I'm so, I love bells. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. That was so weird. It's like, oh, you like bells? Let me give you some bells. And as I'm just walking Valencia, I was going inside shop. The thing is, I don't actually shop. I window shop. I came across this one building. I'll put the name of it on the screen. And it cost two euros to go in. I was like, why not? It seems like so many people are going in and out. And it was very interesting. I will say, it felt like a few of the scenes from Harry Potter. There was this one hall that felt like a scene from Harry Potter. And then down in the basement, it felt like another scene from Harry Potter right before Dobby died when they're in the little cellar but that was really cool there was stained glass very little details also sat and watched the video and history of the building I also did a sunset cruise the night before I left Valencia and part of the ticket it came with an alcoholic beverage which I don't even know what it was but it was good I had no idea what to expect from a sunset cruise I wouldn't say I hated it but I didn't love it they had music going you could be up at the top or down below. If you're up at the top, there wasn't really much seats. And then if you're down below, there wasn't that many people because everyone wanted to be up at the top. I stayed up at the top for a little bit and then I made my way to the back of the bow and then I made my way to the front of the bow. In the front of the bow, you could feel those waves. There was times where the waves flashed over. Might have got one or two video clips of it. The sun was already down and the lights were starting to turn on in the city and it was just pretty seeing it starting to light up because it's always different seeing the city during the day and at night. After the sunset cruise, I knew I was going to have a long travel day. I went back to the hostel, fell asleep, woke up. I had a total of three buses, two trains, and it took nine hours to get to Malaga. And that's where I'm staying at right now for three nights. I'm staying in an 8% female only dorm. The bathrooms are detached and they are communal. I didn't get a clip of the bathroom because, again, I'm just trying to respect people's privacy. I'm on the top bunk. Usually I'm on the bottom bunk, but for some reason I've been getting placed on the top. And this bed compared to the Valencia hostel is a night and day difference. It's comfy, it's cozy, it doesn't make noise when you get on it, your curtain shuts all the way, you're against the wall, you have two outlets, a light, and there's a shell. Super nice. Tonight is my final night and then I don't know where I'm gonna go. I always treat myself to a hotel one night a week. I need to figure that out. But that travel day felt so long. I took a 45 minute bus to the train station got on the train that was a little over two hours to Madrid I had a two and a half hour layover and I'm so glad I checked my ticket because I was starting to get comfy cozy and realized I needed to leave out of a different train station in Madrid put my packs back on it was super easy but it felt like a maze getting from that train station to the metro and into the other train station and to get from that train station to the other train station it was about 50 minutes once I got to that train station I had about an hour so I went and got food I got this wrap and then I also got this croissant but I saved the croissant for the train and of course I got a coca-cola but that wrap was so good the sauce that was inside of it was like a strawberry jam then I got on to the next train and that train was about two and a half hours to Malaga and then once I got to the train station I had to take bus that was about 40 minutes to the hostel and then I had to walk the 10 minutes from the bus and it was so hot the other thing I booked this city without knowing there was a giant festival going on when I got off that bus and I'm walking down the city center and I see people doing the flamenco drums going people had these like shot glasses pouring out of pink bottles like everyone was carrying around these pink bottles and pink shot glasses I was like what is going on I'm like is this normal day life as I'm drenched in sweat I get to the hostel, I check in, and then I needed a new SD card. So I got back on the bus all the way to the train station because there was a camera store that I knew was gonna have what I needed, which if I would have known that at the time, I would have got it before going to the hostel, but I, it was a long day. I was just like, I need to get to the hostel. Uh, I got the SD card, then I made my way back to the hostel. Ended up hanging out with a few people from the hostel. Some of them went and got food, and then this girl and I ended up going to the convenience store and get ourselves a drink and then go to the rooftop and chill out. And when we got to the convenience store, they had, I'm gonna pronounce it wrong, it's like Cartolia, Cortilla. I'm gonna put it on the screen, but that's the drink. It's basically a really sweet wine that's made here. That's why everyone is drinking 
checking it. And then when we were checking out, she gave us little pink shot glasses, which just makes it so festive and fun. And then the next morning, I wanted to do a sunrise hike. I was planning on going by myself where I originally wanted to go, and I ended up going, but it was gonna take two and a half hours by bus because the buses run less frequently during that time. And I wanted to do this hike in the dark and then make it to the top by sunrise. I made the comment on the rooftop and this guy was he's like, I'd be down for a hike. And I was like, are you sure? I'm going super early. And he said, yeah. He actually has a rental car. So it was a 20 minute drive by car, which is insane that it'd take two and a half by bus. I know it's crazy. We met up downstairs. We went into the hike. It was two miles. It was steep in some parts, but it really wasn't that bad. And the view was insane. And it was so pretty. You had the orange, the purple, the blue. There was a cross up at the top. There was a bunch of goats and they were all different. I'm so used to just seeing the basic white mountain goat, whereas here it's actual goats. Like, I don't, I'm like, are they wild? Are they someone's pets? Who knows? We just sat up there, talked for a little bit. Then we made our way back down and we ended up getting breakfast and that was so good. I got this yogurt bowl, fruit, granola, and honey. And then I got a glass of orange juice. And then I went back to the hostel and I took a nap. I woke up, I went to this fortress and on my way to this fortress, I came across a Malaga sign where you're supposed to stand and be the L. No one was over there. So I set up the tripod and then I started making my way to the stairs because I thought you could go inside. When I got to the top, there was a gate and I was so confused, but the view up there was super cool. And then down below too, an ancient theater. And then there was also this glass pyramid and inside of it was a tub. I took a picture of information on it so you can pause to read. There was a museum and I knew that was free and I highly recommend it because it was the fanciest museum. I'm surprised they don't charge you. There's such cool ancient artifacts and paintings. It felt fancy because there was sliding doors that would automatically open and it was just felt like you're walking into a cooler and I'm assuming they have to keep it cold but it felt so nice from being out in the heat and then going into that and this place was massive. It was three floors. There was so much to see. You were allowed to film in there but there were sculptures and paintings that aren't proper for being filmed and I don't want to get flagged on YouTube. Since there was a Feria festival going on, it's all day, all night. There's a fairground. Girl and I were gonna go to that so I wanted because not only did I wake up early but I didn't go to bed till 1 30 and then I didn't really sleep because there was just so much noise going on outside. Went back, took a 30 minute snooze and then I took a shower, got ready, met her up at the rooftop, and we just sat up there, hung out, and if you know me, I don't really go out as I once used to. But I feel like since I just happened to be here during this festival, I wanted to experience it. There was another girl that just got there for the night. So it ended up being us three that went, and it was interesting. There was a bunch of lights, there was a bunch of air rides. Boom. There was food, there was drinks. We ended up getting sangria and we were not expecting it to be in this massive bucket. It was six euros, which for that giant thing in the States would probably be like anywhere from 20 to $30, especially if it was at a festival. We got those drinks, it was as big as my head. And we just walked around and hung out, sat down and talked. And then we went inside one of the little clubs. It was an experience. It was good. The last bus you can get on is at 6 a.m. We left at 2.30, got back to the hostel around 3. It was knocked out by 3.30, which brings us to where I'm at right now. And let me tell you, it was a journey to get here. By train and bus, it was supposed to be an hour and a half to two hours. By car, it's about 30 minutes from Malaga. I'm going to pat myself on the back because I honestly have not really had any issues with buses. It's super easy to figure out. You have your phone, you can read. Clearly, I did not read but clearly a handful of us didn't read the right thing on this metro. And I'm like, I'm going the wrong way. When's the next stop? Like, why is it not stopping? It eventually stopped. I get off. I'm looking at my phone. Shoot, now this is adding another hour. So I have to go back and then I would have to wait again. I'm noticing, oh my gosh, there's six other people that made the same mistake as I did. We all grouped together. We're figuring out how to get back in the next train to get 
back was an hour and then from there it would have been an hour and a half for me to get where I'm at right now. So in my head I'm like honestly I'm just gonna pay an Uber and so when I said that to everyone they're like you know what do you want to split one? We ended up splitting an Uber. Some people just missed the stop whereas some of us got on the wrong tram and I just want to make it clear one of them literally lives here and got on the wrong one. He needed to go to the city that I'm in, but I obviously was gonna go further because I landed at this castle, which we'll talk about that in a minute because that's where I wanted to do my sit down and intro, but I only had an hour there and it was busy. There was one person that was gonna wait the hour then three people got into an Uber to backtrack and then this guy and I split an Uber since his drop was on the way to my drop. And I can already hear people, that's dangerous, that's not safe, Ugh. I know when something's off and when something's not, doesn't feel right, okay? I have a good instinct. And this man was so kind and so nice, I had some really great conversation. He's the one that's from here and messed up. <laughs> Made me feel better. The locals messing up, it's the train situation fault, well, not, not mine. I'm gonna blame it on the train. And he actually recommended this place and I wasn't even gonna come up here. I was just going to go to the castle and then to the beach. So it worked out because now this is my filming spot. What? Because it was not gonna happen. I made it to this mini little castle. I didn't realize it was gonna close at two. So I had an hour to cherish my time there. I also wish I had time to scan the QR codes because throughout the castle, there's a QR code. Again, I only had an hour. The castle wasn't big. Editing this, and I don't know what happened to the clip of it. I probably honestly just didn't hit record and I probably thought I was recording the whole time. I went to this castle. I just went because I saw pictures of it. I had no idea what it was about. It's actually a tribute to Christopher Columbus for discovering America. And so each of the QR codes that you could scan would tell you why that was significant with Christopher Columbus. So I don't know. I thought that was so crazy that I just clicked on this castle and I went because of the look of it. And then it ended up being something for America. It cost three euros. I walked up here and now the rest of this is gonna be the vlog. I just came up here, saw this building, sat down in this spot. Hopefully the wind didn't take over too much. I honestly feel like I'm in Greece. I've never been to Greece, but this is what I would think Greece feels like this view all the white. It's so cute up here. I had a view over there where I was sitting, but this? Oh my gosh, and you can see the castle. There's the castle right there that I was at. And then down, there's all these little ponds. Then you got the pretty white buildings, the ocean. Does it make me lazy that I'm taking the elevator? <laughs> saving me some time. Hopefully you can hear me with the wind and the traffic, but I made it down to the beach, but I want to get a little photo video on these little chairs. And then I have to walk over on that curve because that's where the beach is. This is just a cliff part. But look how, oh my gosh. Not me just noticing a car because this is a giant cliff. Holy cow, look at this. That's so sad. Look at that car right there. Do you see it? I honestly thought it was gonna be like a swing and they move and those were just gonna be ropes, just poles. I have so much to update you on. It's actually insane. The next day where I last left off was the photo op spot. And then I started to make my way down to the beach and I honestly just put my feet into the water. I didn't get fully in cause I knew I wanted to get food. And I was just kind of like walking to the restaurant cause it was on the beach. I got to the restaurant and I ended up getting a BLT and a Coca-Cola. It was four years. Euros. It was so delicious. From there, I got a text from a girl from the hostel and she's like, hey, I'm in the city center. Do you want to come and walk around with me? And I was like, oh, well, I won't be there for another hour and a half. But if you're down to get food when I get back, then sure. I don't really talk about it on YouTube, but in hostels, I will hang out in the lobby area or by the bar and chit chat for an hour or two. And then I get invited to go out. But since I just move so fast, I just choose to go to bed early. 
I get back to the hostel. I go up to the rooftop. Everyone's up there chit-chatting. Her and another girl, we went to the convenience store, got the wine bottles, had the little shot glasses, and then we also stopped at a restaurant to take takeaway for tapas. It was so cheap. I wish I got a video clip of what I ordered, but I had, it came with the crackers. It was meat with tomato sauce and almost like a French fry. And then I also got like a bruschetta that had fried cheese, caramelized onions, and chicken. And oh, my mouth is watering thinking about it. The caramelized onions, just chef's kiss. It was so good. But we brought that all back to the rooftop and we ate and we were talking with everyone else. And there was a group of them gonna go to the fair off festival again because the fairy off festival goes all week and it's a Friday night trying to get a head count oh who's all going to make sure we stay like together that's when me and the two other girls are like are we gonna go again tonight <laughs> next thing you know booked my bus ride for this morning and then I went and packed all my bags I hopped in the shower just to rinse off I put on some light makeup I've been wanting to wear this butterfly dress for so long and I've had it with me in the vacuum seat bags. I want to wear it and get actual good photos in it because I absolutely love it. I felt like it was perfect for the night because it's colorful. There was a few other people that needed to get ready so they also went and got ready and then we just all met up at the rooftop. It was about 20 of us. I don't know but then we started making our way and honestly with us being in that big of a group I was shocked that we stayed together the entire night. Usually when you're in big groups like that it's just so easy to and get separated but no. I mean people did slowly leave over time. They had someone to go back with to the hostel and honestly I probably should have gone back earlier since I had the bus at 8 15 a.m this morning. I already had everything laid out and everything packed ready to go so I just literally wore this to bed. I already had the toothbrush out. I went and brushed my teeth, wiped off my makeup, called into bed. At this time as I'm opening my phone to set the alarms it was 444. Ooh this is getting power nap. I actually woke up before my alarm which is crazy. I don't know if it was like a body instinct thing, but I was like, oh, I could still sleep here. So I just kind of like laid there for a moment and I was like, okay, I need to get up. I got up, brushed my teeth, quietly got all my bags and I went downstairs, checked out, walked to the bus. The bus could take me to the bus station. And then I got onto the bus and the first bus, no one was sitting next to me. I was like, oh, this is great. And I'm starting to look up because I always treat myself one night to a hotel. I was starting to look up a hotel and we made our first stop to drop off some people, then pick up new people. Then someone came and sat next to me. Oh, you going to where I'm at right now, so I'm not gonna say it. And I was like, oh, I'm getting dropped off before that. And he was like, oh, I don't think there's any other stops. And I was like, what are you talking about? Cause I did have a bus transfer, but I thought it was gonna just be before it. Cause that's what makes sense. Cause I had the city I was at and the city I was going to. There was nothing about going past my city to the city I'm at now, getting off, having to wait to, two and a half hours until another bus and then backtrack two and a half hours. If it wasn't for him to be a talkative person and speak really good English, I would have already booked the hotel at the other place. In my head, it didn't make sense for me to go all the way there just to like come back. Now I'm in Portugal. I thought I was still gonna be on the Spain side. And something else I wanna add is our bus driver could not speak a word of English. We made a stop, but the stop was to get food, drinks, and then get back on the bus and start driving again. So when we did that, I had everything in Google Translate and he's reading it. Doesn't make sense. So he tries to find someone on the bus who could speak Spanish and English. And there was this girl who could a little bit. She tried to help me out and he was like, no, I'm not doing that. Even though literally I was like, you can drop me off on the outskirts of the town because on the outskirts of the city I, was, I wanted to originally go to, there was a train that went from there. That train would have been two years. And usually bus drivers will do that, but I think since there was a language barrier, he d it wasn't making sense in his head. But I'm like, it doesn't make sense into my head why Flix bus would make me go all the way past it, just get on a bus to go all the way back. So my plans completely changed and now I'm here. Mm -hmm.